So Determined Strike is the debut full length from Sarmat, a band who kind of introduced themselves with a, a medley, a sort of jammed in studio medley, uh, where they presented what is, uh, what a lot of people described as a little bit of artificial brain and a little bit of imperial triumphant, probably because there are members of those bands in the group. But uh, what's interesting about that is that they presented jazz metal, jazz death metal, progressive on either side and avant-garde for sure, in this record and they've done so in a different way i think that uh a lot of people out there have been looking for ways to combine uh competent modern jazz fusion and uh the avant-garde and aggressive dark side of it with uh extreme metal and failed miserably so this is maybe one of the few groups who i think make a coherent statement from it and uh make an entertaining record from it and uh part of that is the people involved of course, you know, but also uh, getting a little bit away from the Zorn-esque side of uh, Imperial Triumphant, which is maybe a very deep abstraction for a lot of people, and then finding something that is uh, it, you're able to follow here, and something that is uh, maybe not catchy, but it is memorable in its sway. There's a certain swing to this record, as it, it's sort of trumpet-driven, and there's saxophones all over the place. Uh, it really is like a it wants to be a 50-50 combination if it could go that far. But still, there's a, an extreme death metal side to this record. So we'll, we'll cut into a song and see if we can make sense of that. So... The real success of this record is that there is coherence. There is an admixture that's obvious. There is a stream of consciousness, consciousness that is certainly happening at, at all points. But uh, they make a performance out of it. And really, I think this is the type of band that will convince most in person and in performance. Because seeing these people perform is exciting. It's interesting to see that it all works together. I think the drummer is particularly gifted in uh, creating that little bit of chaos that you want from the uh, aesthetics of free jazz, while the um, the use of trumpets and saxophones gives it uh, an unwieldy reeling feeling that is cinematic and a little bit crazed. And then we get the vocalist who is kind of going all over the place, uh, trying to, to work along with the music. And uh, he doesn't have like a wild range, but he does have a wild set of expressions available to him, which uh, mostly come with sense and give it a, the extreme kind of underground death metal feeling that uh, adds to the interest here overall. So uh, obviously a big part of this is the, the bass and piano work from Steve Blanco. Um, I don't know that he is still in the band. Uh, I think so, but... Uh, obviously a stand-up performance here if you watch the live video of them performing it's a very impressive bass presence i think even more so on the live recording and uh overall really interesting record I, it's it's sort of like uh describing sand as it's moving there's a lot to it there's uh, a lot of minutia to discover and it, that's kind of the joy of it but also the the impenetrable nature of it uh they don't quite make glass out of it so uh yeah, I think the tag is uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra and their sense of wild movement in the 70s and uh, defeated sanity and their sense of wild movement in the now. Uh, it it kind of gets you there. That's not really correct, but I think that that will get the right people in the door as to what this is and what's interesting about it. So uh, I just thought it was just exceptionally different and memorable and it has a, a strange theme and an interesting art style applied to it so i yeah i was all into this um go ahead and check that out if you're interested in avant-garde death metal with jazz influences um again it's a high recommendation for me you can read a lot more uh, probably more coherent thoughts in the written review and uh check that out 